Welcome back to another episode of Strange Bar and Grill. Today we got another weird, bizarre, crazy story coming your way. If you guys are new to my channel, you guys know I go out and find those strange, bizarre, weird, dark, twisted, true crime stories, and I'm bringing it to my channel. This one is no different. This is a wild story. This is gonna be about a kidnapping that you've probably never heard of, and you're gonna wanna stick around and listen to this one because it's totally bizarre. First things first, if you're new to my channel, make sure you guys leave the like button a tip, join that SBG family by hitting that subscribe button and hitting that notification bell. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump right in, guys. Let's go. This story takes place in Birmingham, Alabama on Friday, September 11th of 2020 between 7 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Elton Stevens is asleep alone in his $2 million mansion and the following unfolds. And before we go any further here, let's get one thing straight here. Elton Stevens suffers from sleep apnea. He tracks it with an app called Snorlab. And what it does is while he's sleeping, it actually records him sleeping. It records the audio of him sleeping. So. The next conversation here that I go over is actually recorded through his app Snorlab. And this video is not sponsored by Snorlab, but Snorlab, if you're listening, you wanna throw a couple of dollars my way? Hey, I'll take it, right? At 7 a.m., a door slams. A young man has just entered the bedroom of a $2 million mansion. He stands over the bed where Elton is fast asleep. The man loudly says sir hello why are you in my house elton still half asleep says w what the man says what are you doing here elton replies you scared me the man says again what are you doing here sir what are you doing here elton replies excuse me what what are you talking about sir excuse me still half asleep the man says are you supposed to be here elton replies yes this is my house i'm supposed to be here what are, you, what are you talking about? The man asks again, are you supposed to be here? He says, yes, I rent this house. Like, uh, yes, I live here. I'm supposed to be here. The man replies, I just bought this house off market. I bought this house and everything in it. I own this house. Why are you in my house? Elton replies, no, you didn't. The man says, yes, I did. I bought it two months ago. My whole family's here. We're moving in. What are you doing in my house? Why are you sleeping in my bed? Elton replies, there's no way you could have bought this house. I live in here. The man says, I bought this house. Who are you? Elton tells the man his name. I'm Elton Stevens. And again, just a reminder, this is true story. Sounds bizarre. True story. This dialogue was taken from the Snorlab app. So Elton says, okay, so what now? The man says, you tell me. Elton says, do you want me to leave? The man says, yes, I want you to leave. Get out of my house. Elton, he's just still shocked. He's just kind of like taken aback. And the guy just says, well, show me some credentials. I got my credentials. Show me some credentials. Who are you renting this house from? Elton tells him the name of the man. We'll call him Mr. B. Tells him the, the name of the man who he rents this house from. And he's just kind of like, okay, well, I brought my family here to see their new home. Like, why are you in it? Elton says, you know what? Can we just go in the living room? Let's talk and let's discuss what's going on here. And the man says, no, my family's out there. I will not go to the living room with you to talk. Elton says, buddy, you are scaring me. And the man says, bud, I am not trying to scare you. If I was trying to scare you, I would scare you. And I've never done business with this Mr. B guy other than buying high-end expensive cars from him. I've never done any kind of real estate business with him. And I know Mr. B is not a crook. So I don't know what you're talking about. So then Elton still, he's still, he's halfway asleep. So he's still just in a state of confusion. And he says, okay, do you want me to leave? You know what? I just want to get my car and I just want to leave. And then this man says, no, you can't leave. We need to figure out why what's going on with this house and why I'm out of a whole house here. What's going on? Elton says, you know, logic will say, hey, is this a robbery? Am I being robbed right now? And the man says, no, this is not a robbery. Do I look like a robber to you? No, I'm just a man who wants his house. This is not a robbery. Elton says, yeah, you actually do look like a robber to me. The man says, I do. Elton says, no, 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 I made a mistake. No, you don't look like a robber to me. Can we just go to the living room? And the man says, okay, we'll go to the living room, but are we gonna behave? Are you gonna act nice? Or are you gonna freak out my fiance, my kids and everybody? If you do, I will hurt you. And Elton says, do what? The man says, I have no problem with you meeting my family as long as you act correct. And Elton, he's still, he's like, okay, what do you want? Do you, is it money? Is that what you want? Do you want money? And then it's at this point where this man picks up Elton's phone and puts it in his pocket. And the whole time when it's in his pocket, 
his phone continues to record for another two hours. So at this point, Elton gets up in his pajamas and they head to the living room. And the man says to his fiance, says, hey, baby, this is Mr. Elton. Say hi to Mr. Elton. The woman responds back, hey, how are you? And this woman is Tabitha Nicole Hodges, 31 year old, five foot, 130 pounds, brown hair, number of traffic violations, arrests, the whole works, just cusses like a sailor. Oh, I mean, nothing wrong with that because I cuss like I say it sometimes too. But the works, this lady is a, you know, a work of art here. She's been arrested for manufacturing narcotics and things of that nature. So, I mean, dealing with some criminals here. And with Tabitha sitting on the sofa are two children, a boy 13 years old and a girl 11. Nod to Elton, say hi. Elton nods back to them, says hello. And he tells the man, you have a beautiful family here. And the name of this man that we're talking about is Matthew Amos Burke, 34 years old, five foot seven, 170 pounds, not a very big guy, brown hair, blue eyes, you know, thick neck, um, what you would call like a wrestler's neck, um, tattoos all over him, you know, looks like a rough dude, looks like a rough, rough guy. He's wearing a turned around baseball cap. Um, a black shirt with a red horse on it, probably like a polo uh, shirt with the horses on it. Blue jeans, wearing a white belt, fashion sense just all over the place and nuts. And some red tennis shoes, like this dude looks wild. Like just hearing his description, fashion sense all over the place. I mean, not that my fashion's any better, I'm wearing this shit, but dude sounds wild to me. And in the past decade, he's been arrested multiple times for possession of drugs, tampering with evidence, resisting arrest, carrying a pistol without a permit, trafficking, trafficking methamphetamines. So you name it, this dude is all over the map on his crime stuff. Like this dude sounds like a career criminal. Um, and he just completed a three year prison sentence and at the time was currently out on parole for trafficking methamphetamine. So now that we got their backstory out of the way, let's get back to this story here. So Matthew and Tabitha arrived at Mr. B's house five hours prior to that seven o'clock uh, 7 a.m. run in with Elton. They showed up at about around 2 a.m. They forced open the door. They went in. They liked what they saw. They also saw Elton's 2012 Toyota Tacoma. They also saw his collection of luxury vehicles, a 1971 Mercedes 280 SL and a 2012 Maserati sedan. He had a total of 17 vehicles, but this, these are the two that they liked. And they like I said, they broke in, they liked what they saw, they liked his home, so they actually took the keys to his Maserati and drove back to their trailer park, about 45 minutes away. This trailer park was located in Rimlap, Alabama. And when they got to their trailer, they woke up their children and to show them their brand new car that they just got and to take them to their brand new home that they're gonna be living in. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. So they return back to Elton's house at 7 a.m. with the kids and they proceed to make their way back into the house. The family raided the fridge. They just admired the house, looking at the floor to ceiling windows and just thought, oh man, this is so amazing. Look at our new home, this is beautiful. They admired the artwork, the classic Triumph motorcycle that was on show in the living room. They're just like, oh wow, look at all this cool stuff we have. And they also helped themselves to Elton's personal fix. So they found credit cards, debit cards, a nice camera. They found an, an Italian shotgun in a closet. They helped themselves to that. A Derringer, a 1945 long barrel Smith & Wesson revolver, about 12 high-end watches, and a Yeti cooler to carry out all the loot. And you're probably wondering, what the hell are these people doing? Like, what are they thinking? Like, do they really believe this is their house? And the answer to that question is, I have no idea. I have no clue what the hell they were thinking. This is a new one. But if I had to take my guess, they are probably hopped up on one of their illegal substances that they were known to indulge in. Elton actually believes that maybe someone told him that there's this beautiful house out here, there's this elderly person that lives there, and he believes that they probably thought they can come in and just talk their way into his house and kick him out of his house. Um, Cocaine's one hell of a, no, <laughs> cocaine's one hell of a drug, or whatever Dave Chappelle used to say. Um, <laughs> Methamphetamine's a hell of a drug. And they also didn't know who the elderly renter, renter was. They didn't know how deep his pockets went, but they're about to find out. Back to the, 
back to the living room. They just pulled Elton out of his bedroom to the living room. He meets the guy's family. At this point, they're still debating on whose house is this. Elton is like, this is my house. I'm renting it. This guy's like, nope, this is my house. I just bought it all cash. I bought everything in this house. It's all mine. So at this point, Matthew, the man that woke him up from his sleep, asks him, okay, well, how much do you think this house is actually worth? Elton responds, uh, probably about between two to three million dollars. And Matthew says, Yep, well, I paid two point something million for this house and everything in it, and I don't like being ripped off. Then Elton asks, hey, man, do you just want some money? I can write you a check right now on the spot. Do you just want some money? And Matthew, sounding insulted, says, I don't want any money. I want my house that I bought. This is not a common mix up, sir, he says. Elton says, huh? Matthew says, but this is not your everyday common mix up. Like, hey, you got the wrong luggage. Elton says, look, you can just take anything you want. And Matthew says, I don't want to take anything. This is all mine. I paid for it. Elton says, hey, do you, do you just want a car? And Matthew says, I don't want a car. I want what I paid for. He says, I don't know why this is happening to me. I would do anything for those kids out there. I would do anything for that little lady out there. She's had a rough life and I promised them better. And Elton, still trying to reason with this guy, says, you know what? I can help you out. And Matthew says, well, I'll start talking. Well, you say you don't want money. Matthew replies, you don't know what I want, buddy. And it becomes increasingly clear that Matthew does not know what the hell he wants either. Um, at this point, Elton, he's asking, he just keeps asking, hey, can I put on some clothes? Can I go to the bathroom? And he just keeps asking, and he's eventually permitted to actually use the restroom. And Matthew says, you wouldn't dare get a gun, would you? Because that wouldn't be safe. And Elton says, hey, I would never do that. I would never, ever do that. Okay, I'm just saying, says Matthew. But what Elton does get from the bathroom is some Xanax. He takes two of them, and the Xanax would come in handy over the next seven hours. And then back in the living room, Matthew asks Elton if he owns any properties. Now Elton responds, yes, I actually own a new house in Birmingham, which I'm actually moving into next month. And I also own a 500 acre farm in Bibb County. This piques Matthew and Tabitha's interest. They start inquiring about the farm. Then they start, um, they start asking, you know, what is it like? Uh, they start kind of hinting at, you know, maybe just give us the farm in place of your house. We'll take your farm instead. But Elton explains to them that with deed transfers and things like that, it's going to involve too much people, more than they'd probably like. Um, so he kind of steers them away from that idea. He should have quick thinking just said, yes, I'll give you the farm and whatever and got out of this situation and try to end it right there. Um, that's probably something I would have tried. But, you know. You never know what you're going to do in these situations, right? What would you have done at that moment? Let me know in the comment section. So at this point, Matthew says, okay, well, how much money could you transfer into my account liquid right now at this moment? Elson says, I don't know how much you want. And he kind of tells a little lie here. He says, I don't have a lot of money, but what would get you to leave me alone forever? Matthew asks, or just for today? And then at this point, the kids start kind of getting a little uncomfortable because they're thinking, OK, maybe this isn't our home. Maybe our parents are on their bullshit again and they're t telling some lies here. They're on drugs. Right. And then Matthew asks Tabitha, hey, are you hungry? She responds, yes. And then he asks Elton, you know, do you have anything in this house that we could eat? And Tabitha basically says, no, our son's not going to eat. Matthew asks why. And she says, because he's his, his stomach feels funny once he found out that this guy actually lives in this house. And Tabitha assured the boy, yes, this is our house, but he just still won't eat because he knows deep down this is not their house. His parents are on that shit. Then Elton chimes in and says, hey, I got some chicken salad. Do you folks want some chicken salad? Hell yeah, I want some chicken salad, says Matthew. So him and Elton go into the kitchen to go get that chicken salad. So while eating the chicken salad, Matthew says, hey, do you got any crackers? He's kind of rummaging around looking for crackers. All he finds is some wheat thin, so he's kind of a little upset. He says, you know what? You need to sit down. You look nervous. And with you being nervous, you're actually making my kids uncomfortable. And I do not like that. You need to make my kids feel comfortable. Elton says, I did not make them feel uncomfortable. Matt says, hey, they won't even come in here to eat. You're making them feel uncomfortable. At this point, Elton's walking back to the living room and he says, hey, where are you going? Elton says, hey, I'm just going to go sit down in the living room. I'm not feeling good. And Matt's getting a little upset and he says, hey, you're, see, you don't make me, you, you know, you're getting wild. You're getting out of hand. Do not make me do something. Um, so, you know, Matt, Elton goes and sits down in the living room. Matthew turns the attention to his to the, to the little girl and says, hey, what are you doing? How are you feeling? You want to get something to eat? And he's trying to, you know, coax her to get something to eat. He says, yeah, there's some chicken salad in there, some crackers, you know, eat something. And the little girl says, 
Mama says, you're trying to get the farmhouse that he has. And Matt says, yeah, I think we are. So then Elton trying to come in and take a little more control of the situation says, you know what? How about we just go down to my bank and I can write you a check on the spot for $10,000 right now. And then Matthew says, $10,000? $10,000? You can't even live for another 10 minutes off $10,000. Don't insult me with that low offer. And don't you look at me like that. That shit's insulting. And he says, hey, I'm not here to insult you. I'm trying. I'm not trying to insult you. And Matt says, well, you just did, and very blatantly, sir. At this point, Tabitha walks up to Matthew, whispers something in his ear, and then Matthew turns to Elton, and he says to him, sir, you might just have to take a road trip right here. Elton says, do what? He says, you might have to take a road trip right here. I mean, you said, when I asked you, how much time do you have left? You said maybe 10 years or so in your life. Well, I think you have 20 years or so, and it's all depending on this day right here. It's that easy. It's very easy. And Elton responds, what is that? Living. The hard part is dying, says Matthew. And that is indeed the hard part. Now, this next portion takes place between 10.30 a.m. and 12 p.m. Now, throughout that three and a half hours uh, at Elton's place, two and a half of that was recorded by Snorlab. Uh, that Xanax really helped to keep Elton very, very calm in this situation. It is surreal, almost comical. I don't know what the hell you call this so far. This strange situation, Xanax has been helping him stay relaxed and, 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 and calm. And when he leaves the house with Matthew, he has no idea where he's heading to. He has no clue where they're gonna take him. He gets into Matthew's black Chevrolet and they head off. Tabitha and the kids jump into Elton's pickup truck and follow behind them. And he is just struck with fear, but he's determined to try to stay on their good side and not make any mistakes at all during this whole or ordeal. So Matthew pulls off on Highway 280. Uh, this, ironically, this stretch of this highway is actually named after Elton's father. And he pulls onto U University Boulevard. So as he's pulling into University, as Matthew's pulling onto University Boulevard, it, he's forced to kind of slow down and um, right in front of this McDonald's. And at this point, Elton tries to jump out of the Tahoe and get the hell out of there. But Matthew reaches over and pulls on him, pulls him back in. He rips off some buttons on his shirt, tears his shirt, but he pulls him back into the vehicle. Then Matthew pulls Elton's face to his and he says, you try that again and I will kill you. This is a tone that he hasn't heard from Matthew so far yet um, through this whole ordeal. And he knows as soon as he hears that, he means business. And then Elton says, hey man, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I, you know, he's extremely apologetic, I'm so sorry, but if you were in my shoes, you would do the same thing, wouldn't you? And at this point, Elton is absolutely petrified. Um, so petrified, get out of his mind. They actually pull into a gas station and Matthew sees some of his buddies and he jumps out to, to, to talk to them and he becomes he becomes even more afraid because he's thinking oh crap he's going to hand me off to these guys and then they're going to do something to me but Matthew actually just jumps back in the car and then they kind of make the way down the street so Elton is totally relieved he's like oh man thank, thank god that nothing happened to me so they actually pull into a barbecue spot they order through the drive through Elton's so happy that he Nothing happened to him so far, so he actually picks up the tab and pays for the food and everything, and they go on their way. And this whole time, Elton's asking them, where are we going, where are we going? And Matthew just keeps saying, it doesn't matter, it does not matter. And eventually he kind of gets tired of Elton repeatedly asking him this question, so he just says, back to my place. And during that drive back to Matthew's place, he proceeds to tell Elton about his three-year prison sentence that he just completed. He says, hey, I'm just a messenger. I actually have a boss who's into heroin distribution and sex trafficking. And then he kind of adds something about duct tape and whatnot, and Elton's getting unnerved. He's afraid. I'm um, just hearing this guy's rap sheet and, and the length of crimes and things that he's involved in. And he basically says, hey, if you tell anybody about what's happening today, he doesn't know what his boss is going to do to him and his family. So they eventually exit the interstate. Matthew drives to Blunt County. 
at this point, Elton's trying to kind of keep track of where they're at. He's like looking around. He's trying to figure out, you know, where am I? Just to kind of see if, you know, if he were to get free or something, he can get back to some someplace he recognizes. And Matthew sees Elton doing this and he says, hey, bub, don't even try looking around. Don't even try to memorize. Don't even try to memorize where you're at. There's no chance in hell that you'll ever find your way back from here. But Elton does notice a church called Grace Community. And at this point, Matthew does turn into a field with a bunch of trailers. So Elton does make a mental note. He sees there's like a white mailbox up the road from them. And that mailbox has the numbers 3745 written on it. So he does download that into his memory. So Matthew does continue driving down this field. He makes his way to the second trailer back. He turns off his engine and just kind of sits for a moment. He's not speaking, he's not saying anything. And then behind them, Elton can actually hear Tabitha and the two children getting out of his Tacoma. And Elton just starts praying, please God, please God, please God, please God. And he just kind of repeats that every hour for the, for the rest of his ordeal, he repeats that prayer. And at this point, Matthew finally kind of snaps back into it and he says, home sweet home, finally. Now this trailer resides in Rimlap with a population of about 2,464 people and his name is the backwards spelling of Palmer, which is basically a family that lives there. Elton has never been, been to Rimlap and he never wishes to return to Rimlap. So inside the trailer, Tabitha and Matthew walk Elton to the bedroom and there's like a air conditioner blaring as high as it can go, just it's on full blast. There's bras hanging up all over the ceiling. It's it's a wild scene. So the three of them sit down on the unmade sheetless bed and they begin to start talking. Uh, at this point, Matthew lights up a joint and he starts smoking and they start talking turkey. So Matthew says, hey, tell the truth here, bub. How much money can you give me right now? How much can you wire into my account today? And Elton does tell him the truth. He says $500,000. And then Matthew and Tabitha look at each other and then Matthew says, hey, I want half of that. Elton says, fine, but you know what? I'm cold in here. This AC is just blaring like crazy. Can we go somewhere else to talk, please? You bet, Matthew says, and he leads him through the trailer and out to a small deck that's facing a field. And there's not another human inside. The only place to sit down is a old wheelchair, which Matthew motions for Elton. Hey, come sit down here. And then Elton sits on that truck tire and they begin talking. Matthew offers Elton some of that joint, Elton declines. And then they basically discuss the best way for Elton's money to become Matthew's money. And after a few minutes, Tabitha joins them. She just came out of the shower, has her hair slicked back. She's wearing white jeans and a halter top. She, she sits on a stool that she brought out from the kitchen. And she basically says, okay, now where are we? And then Matthew tells her that Elton's gonna call his banker tomorrow. And he's basically gonna say, hey, I'm buying a farm property from Tabitha and I need $250,000. And at which point they'll wire the money into Tabitha's account. And then Tabitha asks, how long is that supposed to take? Elton says, I don't know exactly, but it shouldn't take that long. And let's do it, she says. So she's excited, she's pumped, she's ready to steal someone's money. So at this point, Matthew still does have Elton's phone. Tabitha tells Elton to use her phone to call the banker. And she gives him her account and routing numbers. And Elton makes the call on speakerphone as directed. The banker tells Elton, hey, I'll send the request to the wiring department and someone should call you back in about an hour. And the banker asks Elton, hey, which phone should I call you on? And Elton looks to Tabitha and Matthew. Tabitha, Tabitha motions this phone and he tells the banker, call me on this phone. And the banker says, sure thing, we'll call you on that phone. So here they are, the three of them. They seem to have come to some type of an agreement. They got a deal. So it's the first time they've actually been on the same page this whole night, but there's just one thing that they're missing now. Elton says, hey, after all this is said and done, are you going to take me back home? And Matthew says, of course we're gonna take you back home. Elton says, okay, well, let's shake on it. So they shake on it. And Matthew promises Elton that after this deal is over, he will take them back home. Now, personally, would I believe them that they're gonna take me back home? In most cases, that's usually not the case because they don't want any witnesses. They don't want any evidence of their crimes. So I personally wouldn't believe them. I don't know if Elton would actually believe them. I don't know at this point if he's actually believing that they're going to take him home or if there's some part of him that's like, okay, we gotta maybe try something to make it less likely that they're going to murder me and bury me out here in the middle of nowhere in Rimlap. 
but uh, Elton, Elton is a very intelligent man. He kind of sensed that if he can kind of connect with Matthew, he would have a better chance of getting out of there alive. So that's just what he did. So over the next two hours, Elton brilliantly started up conversations of, of common topics that these men can kind of bond and discuss and kind of connect with. He starts talking about cars, hunting, fishing, you name it. He, he, he gets deep into those conversations with Matthew and hoping to kind of garner some trust and some kind of connection with him. So they sit there and they're talking about it and it seemed like they're kind of having that bond built and they're getting somewhere and they're just kind of comfortable having, you know, I wouldn't say having a good time, but they're comfortable and it seems like they're friends and they're, you know, they're having those conversations. But obviously those dark thoughts and those those questions started kind of popping up in the back of Elton's mind and he asks him bluntly, are you going to traffic me? Matthew says, no, you're too old and you're too ugly. I can't traffic you. That wouldn't be a thing anyone would be interested in. Tabitha hears a conversation, she says, oh, baby, he's not too bad. Um, but other than that, Elton kind of keeps to that script and he's still trying to connect with them. So he's asking, oh, what are you guys planning on doing with all the money you guys are getting? So she jumps off the stool, grabs the phone out of Elton's hands and she starts thumbing through, starts thumbing through some photos and she says, here, look at that. This is my dream house. This is what I want to do with the money. I want to buy my dream house. And the photo shows a white two-story beautiful home with tons of land uh, for for cows, for horses, and for kids to play. And it just seems like it's a nice house. The Elton asks, you know, what are the owners asking for this house? And that magic number is $250,000. And Tabitha's like, well, now we have the money. We can buy this house. And then Elton says, no, 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 no. He, he tells them what they want to do is start at a lower price, say about 190 grand. And then you take 20% of your cash you have, put that down and then mortgage the rest. And then he grabs the phone back from Tabitha and pulls up a calculator and starts calculating the mortgage. And then the mortgage payments come out to be around 700 bucks per month. And this absolutely delights the couple. Tabitha and Matthew are tickled by this. And Matthew says, this is where we're gonna be married. And you know what? We actually want you to come to our wedding. Yeah, Tabitha says, we want you to be a pallbearer. And when the word finally arrives in Tabitha's phone that the $250,000 has been wired to Tabitha's account, Matthew and Tabitha are ecstatic. They're like school children on Christmas. They're so excited. They're jumping up and down. They're like, yes, they're gonna get their dream house. And they made it. They finally, they finally got up in the world. They finally moved up. And at this point, Ellen says, hey, okay, you promised that you would take me home once you got your money. You're gonna take me home, right? We shaked on it, you, a deal's a deal. Matthew says, yes, of course, a deal's a deal. We are gonna take you home, but we gotta make one stop. We gotta take, make one more stop. And the stop is at a hometown bank. And at this point, Matthew is driving Elton's Tacoma. Elton's riding shotgun and Tabitha is in the back. So they make it to the bank. Tabitha goes into the bank. She comes out with her uh, deposit slip showing that she's as the 250 grand. She jumps in the truck. She's excited. She's hugging Matthew by the neck. And she says, we got our house, baby. We got our house. And then Elton again speaks up and says, now you're taking me home, right? We, we, had, a, we, had, we had a deal. We shook on it. You're taking me home, right? Right, right, Matthew says. And he fires up that Tacoma and they head out. And on this drive back, Elton, he is so afraid. This is the most afraid he has been the whole ordeal because his mind, his, the logic is a quarter of a million dollars. Now, why would they let the only witness, the only person that knows that they got this money, why would, why would they let him go free? So he's, the whole time he's just, he's just scared. He's just, he's afraid out of his mind, but he does see his father's name on the highway. He knows they're going down that stretch of road. So now he's thinking, oh, wow, they actually are going to take me back home. He didn't think they were, but they're actually going to take him back home, it seems. And then at this point, Matthew does mention to Elton that if he tells anybody, he's going to have to kill Elton and his family. Elton acknowledges that and says, hey, just take me home. So this next piece takes place between 3.30 p.m. and 6 p.m. So at this point, they arrive back at Elton's place at around 3.45 p.m. Elton gets out of the pickup, so does Matthew. 
and Matthew says, hey, we're gonna borrow, hey, we're gonna borrow your truck for a couple weeks. Just keep it, Elton says, like, I don't even want the truck, just keep it and just leave me the heck alone. Elton starts to walk up the steps to his front door and then Matthew stops him and says, hey, come here. So Elton reluctantly starts walking back to the pickup truck. Matthew actually hands Elton his phone, gives him a big hug and he leaves. And right now Elton is full of adrenaline and his He's just like, what the hell's going on? He has that weird energy. So he gets back into his house. He sits on the couch. He pulls out his phone and he just looks at it. Now, if this was a movie script, this story probably would have ended right here. But wait, there's more. But this is not a movie. There is no happy ending to this. Elton is not showing up at their wedding, at their two-story, beautiful home. None of that's going to happen. What actually does happen is, Elton is sitting on his couch, sitting on his sofa. He's looking at his phone. He's kind of wondering, should I contact somebody? He's thinking about it. And not because he cares about his abductors, but he was worried about his family. They said he, they'd kill his family if he told anyone. So he calls his older brother, no answer. And he also gets no answers from either of his sisters. He gets in his Maserati. He drives to his brother's house, no one's home. So then he drives to the big house on the hill that used to be his, but is now his his wife and his son. Uh, he separated from his wife, but now it's their home. She's at home and Elton tells her what happened to him. And then from her house, he also reaches his brother and one of his sisters. And he tells them, you know, I'm not sure if I should bring the police into this. I, I just don't know what to do. And the more he thinks about it, the more he kind of decides not to bring police into this. He, he's, he wants to ensure the safety of his family. But immediately after he gets off the phone, his sister calls a retired FBI agent, Ashley Curry, who had also worked for the family business. And of course, Curry tells the sister that yes, he needs to get the FBI, the police, whoever he can involved in this, and that he would actually do it. And his sister says, but hey, they told him he would kill Elton and the family if he were to get authorities involved. Curry says, of course, they all say that. That's what they all say. And shortly after 6 p.m., to Elton's surprise, his estranged wife's driveway fills up with police officers and FBI agents and the whole nine. So by mid-afternoon the following day, Saturday, September 12th, 2020, Matthew and Tabitha were under arrest. Using GPS tracking on Elton's phone, the, F the police had little trouble actually finding their trailer in Rimlap. And Matthew and Tabitha were at home for some reason. You just robbed somebody of a quarter million dollars and you're just sitting at home chilling. Stupid ass people on your part. Um, yeah, when Tabitha saw the police roll up, she started grabbing Elton's watches, his jewelry, all the things that they stole from him. She started picking all of it up and frantically started hiding them. But by the time the police entered the trailer, she kind of realized that she didn't have to do that because the story she was busy inventing for herself would provide a reason for the stolen goods in her presence. <laughs> so while Matthew was handcuffed, driven back to the Birmingham police station, two detectives stayed with Tabitha at the trailer. They basically stated to her that we have to get a search warrant so that we can search your trailer. Tabitha said, that would not be necessary. I want you to search my trailer and to find all of Mr. Elton's things in my trailer. Now, to make a long story short of this, we'll, 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 we'll kind of condense it here. But basically, the gist of her statement that she made to the police officers was that she worked as a maid for Elton and she was hired to come to his place several times to, to clean his house, which of course she wasn't a maid and she wasn't hired to come clean his house. And she stated that on the second time that she came to clean his place that Elton became touchy feely with her and held a gun to her head and forced her to perform oral sex on him. And he abused her and hurt her and did all these things. And she says she wanted to get back at him and they drove up there basically to hurt Elton Stevens. She said, Matthew had nothing to do with this and he told her just to let it go and leave it alone and we'll just file a police report. But she says that she kept pushing because she wanted to get back at Mr. Stevens for what he did to her. She basically said that, she basically said that Elton was scared and surprised by this, that he gave them the credit cards, he gave them the guns, gave them watches, gave them jewelry, plus his truck, 
a quarter of a million dollars. She stated that he gave her all of those possessions in order to keep her from going to the police. And she said that Matthew had nothing to do with this. And I don't know how the detectives did not laugh in her face after hearing this, but it's pretty amazing. And of course the detectives asked, so you didn't kidnap him? And she says, of course not. And of course, in the meantime, Matthew was giving his statement to the Birmingham police. And of course it was wildly different. So she came up with the story, but she didn't tell her partner in crime that, hey, we got a story here. So he's telling a completely different story down at the police department. Matthew's story, basically he's, he says that they were out taking a early morning drive and they stopped by an old friend of Tabitha's. Um, he believed that this old man used to be a sugar daddy of, and they basically told him about the house they were trying to buy and the deal went through and they didn't have the money. And that out of the kindness of the Elton's heart, he said, hey, I'm gonna give you guys the money to get that house that you wanted. And he just gave them a quarter of a million dollars on the spot. And matter of fact, he's Matthew stated that this was a wedding gift. This was their wedding present. And the, the detective basically ran through the charges and was prepared to drop the hammer on them. And he's basically saying, so you're saying that there's no kidnapping, no no theft of property, no extortion, none of that stuff. Matthew says, nope, this was all wedding gifts. This is all for us because he wanted us to have a beautiful wedding. And the detective says, okay, nothing else you want to tell me? He says, no, everything was an authorized gift from this dude. And then he says, okay, well, I have something I want you to listen to. Matthew says, okay, yeah, sure. And then the detective plays back the Snore Lab recording. And then from there, you would think hard proof that Tabitha and Matthew were sent to prison. They got charged and everything's fine. And you would think that, but not exactly. There's a little more, a little bit more to the story. So yes, Tabitha's route into federal prison was pretty much straightforward. Matthew's, not so much. So basically, Matthew had a plea deal uh, where he'd served 17 years. Um, so he agreed to that plea deal and he was ultimately sent to a federal prison. His state charges would be demanded. His state charges were dismissed. So after his sentencing, Matthew was transferred back to Jefferson County lockup with a federal detainer notice, basically saying to the state, you know, hold this guy until we can come and get him and take him to a federal prison. But somehow that detainer notice got lost in the system. And so on Friday, December 10th, 2021, almost a year and a half from the day of his arrest, a Jefferson County Sheriff's deputy happened to notice that there were no charges for this Matthew Amos Burke guy, and he was just somehow in their jail, so he set him free. And at large again, Matthew dyed his hair some weird blonde color, and he quickly learned that few of his friends and family actually wanted to harbor a fugitive. So he just kind of bounced around from motel to motel, and for some reason he didn't leave his city. I mean, he's on the run, everyone's looking for him, and he kind of stays in the same spot where he committed the crime, which is stupid as hell on his part. I mean, we already know these aren't the smartest people in the world here. They're a little crazy. And of course, Elton is like, oh, this guy's, he's out. Like, he's gonna kill my family, he's gonna kill me. So he paid for 24 hour security surveillance, security guards, just to keep him safe and keep his family safe. But in the end, the FBI police force, they could not find Matthew, even though he's right in that, right in the city where they arrested him. But a private investigator, Odie Odin, a six foot, 275 pound, bald and bearded man, took it upon himself to find Matthew. He wasn't paid to do this. He was just someone that knew about the case and he took it upon himself to, you know what, I'm gonna go find this guy and bring him to justice. And that's exactly what he did. Ultimately, Matthew was found living behind a dumpster, behind a Chevron station, and that's where they found him. Ultimately, Matthew was sentenced to 17 years at a federal correctional institute in Manchester, Kentucky. He was charged with kidnapping, bank fraud, and attempt and conspiracy to commit the offense of bank fraud. And on the same charges, Tabitha Nicole Hodges is currently serving 12 years at a Women's Federal Correctional Institute in Aliceville, Alabama. In her original plea, she stated that the kidnapping was all her idea and that Matthew had nothing to do with it. Later, she recanted that plea. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. If you guys like that wild, crazy story, let me know in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think of that story. That's a wild one. Let me know if you actually heard that story before. I've never heard this one. So this is, I just learned about this just a week or two ago. So 
interesting stuff here, guys. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you guys tip that like button. You join the SBG family. You hit that bell notification to make sure you guys are getting my notifications when I'm dropping these new, strange, wild, crazy, bizarre videos for you guys. But anyway, guys, be safe, be good. 